In this video, I'm going to be creating three different animations in Adobe After Effects. But for each animation, I'm going to give myself a completely different time limit. For the first animation, I'm going to give myself a maximum of 10 minutes to create it. For the second, 30 minutes. And for the third, a whole hour. So by the end of this video, you guys should be able to see the real difference between spending 10 minutes half an hour and one hour animating in After Effects. Also, if you want to level up your animating and overall video editing skills so you can start editing like a professional, then I would highly recommend that you check out my video editing product skill cut through the top link in the description below. Also, the way I'm going to be animating today is I'm going to be using the puppet pin tool in After Effects. For each animation, I am also going to have the time it's taking me to create it in the top right hand corner. Even though there will be multiple cuts throughout the um, clips and for the first one there won't be so many because it's only around 10 minutes anyway but for the um, like 30 minutes and one hour one there'll be a huge amount of cuts because all this video would literally be like over an hour long it would almost be two hours so what I've got is I've got a bunch of cuts throughout the whole thing but the timer you can see in the top right is actually how long it took me to genuinely create it. So yeah, let's start on the first one. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition. I'm going to name mine 10 min animation. Then I'm going to import the assets which I'm going to be using for this one. You can find a link to all of the assets which I'm going to be using in this video down in the description below. But for this one and for most of them, I don't really have that many. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new solid. This one's going to be white and then I'll make it 3D and I'll press R to open up the rotations and I'll make the X rotation minus 90. Then I'm going to move it down and this will act as the floor for the, um, for the animation. I'm then going to import this grid overlay and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the uh, white solid. So I'm going to make it 3D, I'm, make, I'm going to make the X rotation minus 90 and then I'm just going to move it down as well. I'm then also going to search up in the effects and presets motion tile and I'll add this motion tile effect onto the grid and then I'm going to increase the output width and height until it matches the um, white solid underneath it. I'm also going to scale it up so and then the squares aren't so small. I'm then going to search up in the effects and presets tint and I'm going to add this onto the grid overlay. I'm going to map black to white and white to black and this will make the actual grid white and the um, lines black. And I'm then going to create a new solid and this will act as the background. So I'll put this right at the bottom and I'll search up in the effects and presets gradient ramp and I'll add this onto that solid. Then I'm going to swap colors and I'm going to make the start color this dark blue color. And I'm going to increase the ramp scatter to 500. I'm then going to import this uh, vector picture of a bank. I got this from FreePick. You can find the link to this in the description below. All of the assets which I'm actually going to be using, which I haven't already got on my computer, I'm going to be sourcing from FreePick, so you can go check them out. And all of the stuff from FreePick will be linked in the description below. I'm going to scale the picture of the bank, and I'm just going to position it where I want it to be. And then I'm just going to move the grid and the white solid down a bit, so and then um, it doesn't take up so much of the screen. And then when I'm happy with that, I'm going to create a new solid, and I'm going to make the color the same color as the blue background but and then I'll increase the brightness of it a bit as well and this is going to act as an overlay but to make it an actual overlay I'm going to press T to open up opacity and I'm going to make the opacity 25% and now everything has like a blue overlay like so and then I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to move this one so and then it doesn't cover the grid and it only covers what is above the grid which is the bank so I want it to line up with the grid and now I'm happy with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start animating. So here I am in FreePick and this is the actual um, like vector which I'm going to be using to animate. But the plan is for this is to get rid of the background, the coins, the arrow, all of that and just have the two businessmen shaking hands. And I'm going to animate that to make it actually come to life. So you can find this in the link in the description below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it and then I'm going to go into Photopea, which is a free online version of Adobe Illustrator. I can use Adobe Illustrator as well. I do have that, but I prefer this to Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to keep using this one. And it's also free for any of you guys that don't have Adobe Illustrator. I'm then going to import the vector, which I've just downloaded from FreePick. And specifically, I'm going to import the EPS file that comes with it when you download it. And now it's imported into FreePick. I'm now going to play around with the layers. So I'm going to delete the background 
and I'm going to start working through and deleting every single part of the background which aren't the two men. And the good thing about these EPS vectors is that you can edit each individual part of the um, of the picture. Now I'm just going to check all of the layers which are left to see if there's any um, any um, like parts of the background still left over because sometimes it can just be this very like thin part of the image and sometimes you can you can't notice it on this transparent background. But when I've made sure that there's nothing else in the image, I'm then now going to start separating the parts of the image that I want. So what I want to do is I want to separate the um, the arms for the two men, which so they're shaking hands, and I'm going to separate the head of one of the two men as well. And the way you separate it is by moving moving it either like up to the top and deselect it from the rest of the um, of the layers, or you move it to the bottom and deselect it from the rest of the layers. For instance, if you look at the guy's hand arm on the on the left, the guy on the left, his arm is in front of the rest of him, which means we can separate this by moving this arm up to the top and it won't change the image because like the arm is already in front of the rest of him. Uh, but if you look at the left of the guy on the right, his um, arm, the one which is about a which is about to shake hands with the other guys, is behind everything else. So we're going to have to move his arm below um, the rest of the image. But just make sure to get every single part of that like limb or that arm or leg or whatever you're going to move. So and then um, when you actually animate it, it moves together. And it's also pretty useful to name the um, folder as well. So I'm going to name this man to arm. So the, in this folder, there are all of the layers for his arm and they are now separated from the rest of the image, which means I can now move the arm without the whole thing moving. And now I'm going to go through and separate the rest of the layers that I want to um, animate. So now I'm good. This is going to be man two head and I'm going to put all of the I'm going to put this one right at the top. And then I'm just going to make sure all of the layers which are part of the head are inside of this folder. So I'm going to try and find the hair and all of it. So here I'm going to put the actual hair inside of the man2 folder. And by the way, I'm just explaining this right now in detail because um, I'm not going to explain it for the other two because the other two, it's, just, it's going to be the same process, but obviously I'm going to spend a lot more time on making the animation a lot better than I'm going to, than I'm going to do for this one. And here are all of these separated layers. We've got man2 head, man2 arm, um, this Russian text, which is basically the rest of the image, and then man1 arm. And all of these layers are the ones that I actually want to animate apart from the um, the Russian text one, that's just the rest of the image. And to export this and put it into After Effects, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File, then Save as PSD. Then I'm going to go back into After Effects and I'm going to import this, but instead of just clicking it and pressing Open, I'm going to go down to here and I'm going to make sure that I click on Import as Composition Retain Layer Sizes. And then I'm going to press OK. And now it will import and then we can drag this into the composition. And as you can see, the two men are here. Now I'm just going to click on this composition, I'm actually going to animate it. So I'm going to get the puppet pin tool up here and I'm going to make points where I don't want his head to move. So and then this is the part where like basically his neck and I'm going to add a point where I want it to actually move. Every puppet pin I make will automatically create keyframes for me. So then I'm going to go forward by around like maybe a second or so. And then I'm just going to move this pin. So and then like this top pin. So and then his head moves and tilts down a bit. And then I'm going to go forward again. And then I'm going to go to mesh one deform and then I'm going to find these um, specific puppet pins. So puppet pin three is the one I actually want to move. So I'm going to open up this one. Then I'm going to go um, go forward and I'm just going to copy like the first keyframe and paste it again. So and then we go um, position one, position two, and then back to position one. So then his head's going to tilt forward, then back, then forward again. And then I'm going to highlight all of these keyframes and I'll press F9. And this is what we have now with the head. It's rocking back and forward. And then I'm just going to copy all these keyframes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the third one and then I'm just going to paste them and then it will create the same thing again. Now I'm going to animate his arm. So I'm going to make points on his shoulder where I don't want it to move. I'm going to make a point on his elbow and I'm going to make a point on his hand. Then I'm going to go forward by around a second or so. And then I'm going to lift this one up. So then his hand's going up. And then I'm going to go into mesh one deform and then puppet pin um, four. And this will show the keyframes we've made. And then I'm going to go and create points for the second guy's arm. And then I'm going to go to the same point as where the other one stops moving, the other guy's arm. And then I'm just going to move his one. So and then it's now connected to the other guy's arm as well. So if I now play this back, 
as you can see they're now shaking hands and then i'm going to highlight these keyframes i'll press f9 and then i'll open up this one as well and then when that one's opened up i'm then going to highlight those keyframes and press f9 so now all of the keyframes for this movement are easy eased and this will make just the movement a bit smoother and then i'm going to go forward again by the same amount and then i'm going to copy this first keyframe and then paste it here and then i'm going to go to the other arm and i'm going to copy the keyframe at the start and then i'll paste it at the same point so now it's going from, uh, you know, lower, then up, then lower again. And then I'm going to copy these three keyframes and I'll paste them at the end. So and then it does the same thing again, like in a loop. And I'll do the same thing with the other arm. So now the arms should go up, down, up, down. It's already been 10 minutes, but I am pretty much done. Now what I need to do is I just, I'm just going to create a small scaling in effect as well. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to search up the effects and presets transform. And I'll add this onto the adjustment layer. I'm going to keyframe the scale at the start, then I'll go forward and I'll increase the scale to like 135. And actually I'll go back to the first one and I'll make the first one 120. So then it goes from 120 to 135. And then I'll highlight the keyframes, I'll press F9, and then I'll edit the graph editor so and then it looks a bit like this. And then now it should scale in like so. And when I've done that, this should be the first animation done. And yeah, I really had to rush through that one, I can't lie, so you probably didn't even understand anything I did. Now I'm going to move on to the second one, which is why I have 30 minutes to create it. So I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to name it 30 mins animation. I'm then going to import the assets, which I'm going to use for this one. And I'm going to create a new solid. I'm going to make the color white. And then I'm going to make it 3D and I'll do exactly what I did for the first animation. So I will make the X rotation minus 90 to create the same floor and I'll move it down as well. So I'll move it around the tool around here and then I'm just going to scale it up. And I'm just going to move it so and then it actually covers like this part of the screen. And then I'll cover it so and then it just looks like the floor. And then I'm going to import the grid and I'll do the same thing I did for the other one. So I'll just do that and then do this and then search up motion tile and then I'll increase the um, size of it so and then it matches the floor. Then I'm just going to add the tint effect and I'll do the same thing I did earlier. So I'll map black to white and map white to black. And when I've done that, I'm then going to create a black uh, solid and I'll make this the background again. And then I'll search up gradient ramp like I did earlier. But this time I'm going to make the ramp shape radial ramp and I'm going to adjust the position so and then it's in the middle of the screen. Then I'm going to swap colors and I'm just going to adjust the position so it looks a bit like this. And I'm pretty happy with this. It has that really cool like bright vibe. It actually took me ages to get this exact gradient. So that took me literally about a minute and a half or something. But now I'm already three minutes in. But that's all right because this one I have 30 minutes so I'll take I won't rush through this one so much and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create a signpost with different signs on it and it's going to create a cool like a little like motion graphic animation with it as well so and then the signs are going to move to show different directions and this is what I'm going to try and create now so I'm going to get the pen tool and I'm going to start off by trying to create the pole so I'm just going to create a straight line And then when it's the right size, I'm just going to increase the stroke and the color is just going to be this blue color. And then I'm going to get the rectangle tool and I'm just going to create the first like direction um, arrow thing. And this will be like the background for it, I guess. And then, yeah, I'll just position it around here and then I'm going to move it. So and then it's behind the pole. And then I'm going to import this picture of the arrow that I forgot to import at the start. And this arrow is going to go on top of the actual um, like background of it. And I'll search up in the effects and presets fill. And I'll add this onto the arrow so and then it's a different color. I'll make the, it the same color as the pole. So now there's this like blue and black um, color combination. And I'm going to scale it down and then stretch it so and then it goes over the um, actual like background of... I don't, I don't really know what to call the black rectangle to be honest. And as you can see now it's actually starting to look like a sign. Then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets glow and I'll just add this onto the arrow. I'm going to increase the glow radius and I'm going to decrease the glow intensity a bit to like 0.7 maybe 0.5 actually and then as you can see now it's a bit it looks a bit cooler and then I'm going to copy the glow from this um, arrow and I'll paste it onto the pole. And then I'll just decrease the glow radius of the pole. And as you can see now, that has the glow onto it as well. And it looks, makes it look quite cool. And then I'm also going to drop this like arrow below the pole. So and then it's just above the uh, like the gray, the black rectangle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick whip this arrow to the um, actual like rectangle underneath it. And this means when I move the um, rectangle, the arrow will move with it. So it will be tracked onto it. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the second direction. So I'm going to highlight the um, arrow and the background underneath the arrow, the rectangle, and I'm going to press Control D2 or Command D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to move these together as well. And then what I'll do is I'll just move the um, the rectangle for this new um, like duplication and I'll just move it over to the left. And then I'm going to drop it down as well. So and then it's just slightly underneath like this. And now I'm just going to change the rotation of the arrow to 90 degrees. So and then now it points the other way. Um, now I'm going to actually like move the signs and animate them. So I'm going to make all of these um, four layers for the um, for the rectangles and the arrows for both directions. I'm just going to highlight all of them and I'm going to press I'm going to make them all 3D like this by pressing this cube. And then I'm going to find the rectangle for the first sign. And I'm just going to keyframe the Y rotation at the start for it. Then I'm just going to make the uh, Y rotation minus 90. And as you can see, it's like coming behind the actual pole. And then I'm going to go forward by maybe around two seconds and I'm going to make it zero. And as you can see, now it's going to like curve around like this. And it looks like the whole thing is spinning. It looks quite cool. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the left one. So I'm just going to um, find this. I'm going to create the same keyframes with the right Y rotation. But the problem is when I try and do it the same way, it doesn't, it just does it wrong. It's really, it's because it's flipped. It basically doesn't rotate the same way. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've got to go around the full way for it to start doing it. So instead of going from, you know, minus 90 to zero, now I'm going to go from minus 90 to minus 180. So now it should rotate the right way. And now I'm just, I just have to flip the arrow because everything's the wrong way now. So I'll just flip the arrow to minus 90 instead of 90. So now the arrow is pointing, pointing the right way. And as you can see, now it actually goes the right way, but it's all the way over here now. And I'm just going to change the rotation. So, and then it's fully, um, like fully turned to the side so you can't see it and then i'm going to move the position so and then it's behind the pole and it starts just underneath the um the first one and then i'll just adjust the um y rotation then so and then it is fully straight and then now when i play this we should have one going to the right and one going to the left like so so that makes it look a lot more interesting and then i'm going to highlight all of these four keyframes i'll press f9 and i'll go into the graph editor and then i'm going to create this steep peak in the middle but then I'll highlight everything so and then everything moves together. And this means it should start off slow, then peak in the middle where it goes fast and then go slow again. So this should make the movement look a lot more smooth. So if I play that now, we'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to move the black rectangle and the um, the left pointing arrow just a bit more forward in time. So and then the first um, like I guess sign pops up first and then the second one comes after. And this is what we've got so far. And this is like the background done, I guess. Now I'm going to go back into free pick and this is the um, like vector which I'm going to be using for this one. As you can see it's like almost the same signs that I made apart from there's two instead of three and this is where I actually got the inspiration for this from. I could have just used this one but I actually wanted to create it myself and I actually wanted to animate it while this one's just like you know still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this but and then I'm going to get rid of the like all of the background apart from just the man. So and then the man will be staring at my like. So and then the man will be staring at my sign instead of this sign. So after I've downloaded this, I'm going to go back into Photopea and I'm just going to import the EPS file like I did for the first animation. And now I'm going to delete all of the layers that aren't the man. So I'll delete the graphics. I'll delete the background simple. I'll delete the um the signs the floor and the plants. So now we just have the character or the man. So now I'm going to separate the tie and I'm going to separate his head. I'm not going to bother with the arms because they're already just in a good position and I'm going to separate his head so and then I can move his head and I'm going to separate the tie so and then I can have the tie like flashing around like flapping around like it's in the wind. So I'm going to find the tie layer and I'm just going to rename it to tie and I'll move it so and then it's like separated at the bottom. And then I'm going to find the layers for his head and I'm going to press this folder button and I'll name it head and I'll separate this one as well from the rest of the image. So now we have the head and the tie separated. So now we have character, head and tie. Now I'm just going to check if they're all separated correctly, which they are. And then I'm just going to export it as well. So then I'm just going to import it with comp um, composition retain layer sizes and I'll just press OK again, just the same way as I did earlier. And then I'm just going to import it into the timeline and I'm just going to scale him up and position him where I want him to be. And I actually want to adjust the size of the sign and I can't just like select them all and 
change the scale because it will mess up the positioning of every layer. So I'm just going to select all of the layers related to the, um, the sign and I'm just going to pre-compose them like this. I'll just name it sign. And then now I'm just going to change the actual like size and position of it, I guess. I'm just going to scale it up a bit and then I'm just going to move it up as well. I guess I just want it to be like higher up. So and then you can see both of them because they were kind of like his head was in the way pretty much before. And then I'm just going to move him so and then he's slightly below as well. And now I'm happy with the position of everything. I'm going to double click on the actual man composition and I'm going to actually animate it. And then I'm just going to get the puppet pin tool and I'm going to make points on his neck and on his head. Then I'm just going to um, like make his head so and then it starts like almost like tilted to the left, I guess. And then I'm going to go forward by around um, two seconds and then I'm going to move his head. So then now it's on the right side, so it's tilted to the right. And then I'm going to go forward by like two seconds again. And then I'm going to copy the first keyframe and then paste it there. And then I'm just going to copy these three keyframes as well. And I'll paste them at the end. So now there's like six keyframes. So now his head's going for the right, then the left. So you can see it's like the right, it's tilting to the right, looking at the right sign. And then it's tilting to the left, looking at the left sign. Actually, what I want to do is I want to change this. So and then it doesn't just keep bobbing uh, back and forward forever. And it goes and looks to the... Um, to the right, then to the left, and then I want it to like his head to tilt back, but this time to, so and then it's just straight. So then it goes right, left, straight. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm now going to create an actual like scaling in effect like I did for the first one, but I'm actually going to make it a bit more complex. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, and then I'm going to add the transform effect like I did for the other one. And then I'm going to keyframe the scale and position at the start. And then I'm going to go forward until the first sign has finished rotating. And then I'm just going to scale the whole thing in. And then I'm just going to like move it up a bit and then move it to the left. And then I'll just add another keyframe here by moving the whole thing over to the other side on the right. And then I'll add another scale keyframe as well. Then I'll highlight all the keyframes I've just made. And I'm going to change the graph. So and then the first one is like has a steep peak in the middle like so. And then the second one will have a steep peak in the middle as well. So if I now play this back, it should now scale in quite smoothly. And I've realized I've actually done it the wrong way. Actually, I, I want the um, first one to go more to the, go to the right, and then I want it to move over to the left. So and then like follows the signs. I should have done this at the start, to be honest. So this looks quite smooth. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly make it so and then when, when the guy's head is like moving back to being straight, I'm also going to create a, a um, third movement with the actual like transform effect. So I'm going to go like a couple seconds from the um, from the third like set of keyframes and I'm just going to make the scale like back to 100 and I'll make the position the same as what it used to, what it was at the start as well or what it should be which is 1920 by 1080. So now as you can see it's back to being normal and then I'm just going to highlight these keyframes and then I'm just going to create a steep peak in the middle with these as well. So as you can see it goes right and then now it zooms out like this and it actually looks quite smooth. And now I just need to actually animate his tie, which is what I should have done at the start, actually. So I'm going to get the puppet pin tool and I'll make points at the end of the tie and then at the start of the tie, like which is just underneath his shirt. So and then I'll go forward by around a second and I'll just move his tie. So and then it's like how it would be if the wind gave it like moved it a bit. And then I'll just go forward again by the same amount and then I'll copy the first keyframe and then paste it there. So now I will go from point A to point B back to point A. Then I'm going to highlight these keyframes and then I'll just paste them again so and then they, it keeps going on. And again, so and then now there's like almost nine, I think nine keyframes. And then I'm going to highlight all these keyframes and I'm going to press F9 and I'll play it back and see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks quite good, but I guess I could make this better. So I'm just going to delete these, all these keyframes which I made here. And I'm going to go a couple frames forward from the middle keyframe and I'm just going to copy it. And then I'm just going to paste it a couple of frames forward from it. So then there's a, like a tiny pause where the uh, tie isn't moving. So as you can see, now it goes up, holds for a second and comes back down again. It makes it look a lot more realistic, like it was being like it's being like um, pushed by the wind. Then I'm going to highlight these and then I'm just going to paste it like I did earlier. So then it keeps going on and on. But now it's got the pause it with the middle keyframes. So then as you can see, it goes from point A to point B to point A to point B. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this um, these part this particles overlay and this will make things just look a bit more interesting. Also I've got five minutes left to spare, so I might as well do something because I don't I think this is a bit bland. So I'm just going to import this particles overlay and I'll put it just below the adjustment layer. And then I'm going to scale it up so and then it fits the rest of the composition. 
I'm going to click toggle switches and modes and then I'm going to change the mode to screen and now it should be an overlay and then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets tint and I'll add this onto this um, this overlay and now the particles are going to be white instead of um, orange and this looks pretty good in my opinion. And then the last thing I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to search up in the effects and presets posterize time and I'm going to see if this video looks good with a low frame rate laggy look that I sometimes use. So I'm going to change the frame rate to 14 and this is the 30 minute animation done in 24 minutes and 51 seconds. Now I'm going to move on to the last animation which I'm going to create in this video which is the one hour one. I don't necessarily need to spend the entire hour because an hour for just one you know animation one small animation is a very long time but I'll try and use more like quite a lot of time for this and I'll try and make this as good as it can be. So I'm going to create a new composition and I'll name this one one hour animation. I'm then going to import the assets which I'm going to be using for this one. And then I'm going to go into free pick and I'm going to, um, and in free pick, and this is the, um, like vector, which I've found on free pick, which I'm going to be using to create this animation. But again, obviously I'm going to download it and I'm going to go back into photo P and I'm just going to import it as an EPS like I did for the other two. And the plan is to de delete the background for the rest of this image. So I'm going to delete this background. And I'm basically going to delete everything apart from the actual basketball court. So all of these little parts and I'll keep the um, actual like basketball court as well, as well as the like little um, green leaves and stuff, because they make it look kind of cool. And I'll just make sure everything's as well is deleted. So I'll just check and go through all of the layers, not all of them, but all of the um, folders to see if like I've got everything. And now I've deleted all of the background. I'm now going to try and locate the ball. And then I'll move this uh, basketball layer up to the top and then I'll turn off the visibility as well. Just so now I can find the layers for his arm, the uh, boy with the balls, his left arm, the one which is actually bouncing the ball. I'm going to make a, like, a folder with all of these layers for that, for that arm. And yeah, I'm just going to name that man one left arm and I'll move this one up to the top as well. And I'm going to move it above the ball. And then now I'm going to separate all of the layers, which I'm actually going to be using. So I'm going to separate the boy who's a, who's like he's against his arms and I'm going to separate his head as well. And then I'll separate the boy with the bull's head. But I'm not going to bother with his right arm because it's just a bit unneeded. So now we should have man to left arm and man to right arm. And man two is the guy like further away from the camera. And man one is going to be the guy with the ball. And then we have a man one left arm ball. And then the Russian text, which is essentially just the rest of the image. And then man one head and then man two head. And now I'm just going to go through all of these layers and check that they're all separated correctly, which I think they are. And then I'm going to go back into After Effects and I'm just going to import this like I did with the other ones. I'm then just going to import it into the timeline and I'm going to create a new solid. And then I'll move it to the bottom and I'll make the layer 3D. I'm then going to make the X rotation minus 90 and then I'll move it down like I've done three times in this video. But then this time I'm going to move it so and then it's in line with the fence. And then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets turbulent noise and I'll add this onto the floor. And this will give it some texture. Then I'm going to search up fill and I'll add this onto that floor as well. And I'll make the opacity of the turbulent noise 50%. And I'll make the color like this dark gray. And as you can see now, it has this like tarmac kind of like texture. And then I'm going to import this city overlay, which I found also on FreePick. And you can find again the link to all of this stuff in the description below. And then I'm just going to position it so and then it's where I want it to be, which is in line with the tarmac like this. So then it looks like there is a city in the background. It's pretty cool. And then I'm going to create a new solid and I'll make this solid at the bottom. And this will act as like what's behind this city and then I'll search up in the effects and presets gradient ramp and I'll add this onto the white solid and then I'm just going to um, swap colors and then I'll make the top color maybe this dark blue color like I did for the first one and it kind of looks like they're playing at night now and then I'll create a new solid again and I'll make the solid this, this same blue and then I'll make it way brighter and then this is going to act as the overlay then I'll make the opacity of this 15% so then it's like the same thing as what we did for the first animation and I'm going to rush through this one, by the way, because I'm all this video is already getting on a bit and this is the longest one. And I can't really include everything I did to create this specific animation or this video would be really, really, really long. And then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets fast box blur and I'll add this onto the city overlay and I'll make the blur radius um, around two and maybe one actually. And then I'll, as you can see now, it's a bit blurry. So it now has that like that sense of depth. Then I'm going to double click on the uh, boys playing basketball composition 
and I'm going to actually start animating it. And this is going to be the hardest animation yet because this one's going to be actually complex. So I'm actually not going to start off by using the puppet pin tool and I'm actually going to keyframe the position of the ball at the start. And then I'm going to go forward by around a second or so and I'm going to move the ball so and then it's in line with the floor like it's about it, like it's just hit the floor. As you can see, it's now being dropped. It's really slow, but it's gonna, this whole thing is going to be in slow-mo. And then I'm going to go forward by roughly the same amount. And then I'm just going to copy this first keyframe and I'll paste it again here. But and then I'm going to go forward by a couple frames and I'll paste it again. So and then there's like a moment of pause. And then I'm just going to copy these four keyframes and I'll paste them like this. Actually, I'll just delete these new copied keyframes and I'm just going to highlight the original ones and I'll press F9. And now they should move a bit smoother. But the problem is, is it now like kind of, it kind of slows down when it's about to hit the floor. So what I'll do to fix that is I'll basically make the shape from this like really curved shape to more of a like rectangular like curve. So and then it's not so curved and now it should move like more realistically. And now I'm actually going to add points on the arm of the boy and I'm actually going to move his arm when he actually bounces the ball. So I'm going to add points on his like arm slash shoulder and then I'm going to add another point on his um on his elbow and then I'll add a point on his hand as well and then I'm going to go forward until the ball's like mid-air and then I'm just going to make his hand go from where it was to slightly below like it's just pushed it and as you can see now it's like being pushed down but it doesn't look realistic at all so I'm just going to play around with the graph so I'm going to highlight them press f9 I'll go into the graph editor and I'm just going to adjust the keyframes until it looks more realistic I really want to get this bit right because it won't look realistic at all if it if it's not done well. So I'm just going to put a quite a lot of effort into this specific part of the animation. And then when I'm happy with how the boy actually pushes down the ball, then I'm going to go to the point just before the ball is about to like go back into his hand. And I'm going to copy this second keyframe and I'll paste it there. Then I'm going to copy the first one and I'm going to find the point where the ball is like stationary again when it should be fully in his hands. And then I'll uh, paste that first keyframe there again. So now like if I play it back, it was it basically will, the guy will like catch the ball just go basically going to reverse the keyframes and i actually think this part actually looks really realistic which is good so i'll then highlight these keyframes and then i'll paste them like at the last one so and then it creates another set and then i'm going to go up and then i'm going to go to the like the ball keyframes and then i'm going to highlight them as well and then i'm going to paste them like after as well now i'm going to animate this guy's head and i'm going to animate the um other guy's limbs as well so I'm going to add points on his neck so and then that part doesn't move and I'll add a point on his head where I want the head to start tilting down. And then I'm going to go forward by around a second or so and then I'll move it so and then it's like kind of moving forward a bit. It doesn't seem like it's really doing much so then I'm going to go to this point and I'll just make it move just a bit more. So now it should like tilt down a bit. But I'll now play around with the keyframes as well because it, it is so I'm going to basically move it closer to the start. I'm then going to copy this one and then I'm going to go forward a bit and I'll paste it again. So then there's this moment of pause and then I'm going to copy the first one and I'll paste this one later on. So and then now it should go like um, point A to point B. It should hold at point B and go back to point A. But I don't want it to just stop moving. So I'm just going to go forward a bit from this last keyframe and then I'm just going to move his head like back this time. So and then it doesn't just repeat what it did earlier. And now I'm going to animate the other guy's head and I'll do a quite and I'll do quite a similar thing. And as you can see now, his head goes forward, then goes back, and then goes forward again. And now I'm going to animate his arms. So I'm going to add points on his like shoulder, then on his elbow, and then, then on his arm. And then I'll go forward a bit, and I'll just move his like actual like hand bit just a bit down. And then I'll go forward again, and I'll copy the first keyframe. And then I'll keep copy, keep like pasting them. So now his it should go point A to point B, point A to point B. And then I'll do same the same thing with the right arm as well. So and then I'll actually make it so and then his right arm moves a bit as well. Now I'm going to go back into the actual like original composition and I'll actually make things look better. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to search up transform like I've done like multiple times and I'm going to add this onto the adjustment layer. I'll keyframe the scale at the start then I'll go forward and instead of just creating like the same scaling thing that I've done twice now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so it doesn't scale in like the same way. It's just going to continuously like scale in at the same rate for like the whole thing. So um, I'm trying to create that, you know, like camera moving, like slowly moving forward, like kind of effect that you see in films. So I'm going to go to the point where I would, uh, the animation like could would probably stop. So around five seconds in, and then I'm just going to scale the whole thing in. And if I play this back, as you can see, it will just slowly scale in. I'm not going to like animate the keyframes. I'm, it's just going to simply scale in like this. 
Then I'll add the posterized time effect onto this adjustment layer. I'll make the frame rate 14. And as you can see, now everything will have a slightly more glitchy, like kind of like low frame rate kind of cool look. And I'm also just going to move this slider to when the animation should end. And then I'm just going to trim comp to work area. So, and then it actually ends here. So, and then everything like, it doesn't, it doesn't just keep going on forever. And then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets vignette. And I'm going to add this onto the adjustment layer. And now I've just gone onto YouTube and I've tried to find a, um, like a rain overlay. So this took a while, but I'm just going to import this into the, um, into the timeline as well. And I'm going to scale it up. So, and then it fits the rest of the composition and then I'll change the mode to screen. And now it has this like rain, um, like overlay. And I think this makes it look really cool. I'll change the opacity of this overlay to 70%. And this is what we've got now. And now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to animate this vignette effect. So I'm going to go to the CC vignette thing here and I'm going to keyframe the amount at the start at 0%. Then I'm going to go forward by around a couple seconds and I'll change the amount to 120. So now if I play this back, it should slowly get darker and darker. I shall increase it to more like 200. And as you can see, it gets a lot darker. It makes it look more like intense. Then I'm going to highlight these keyframes. I'll press F9 and I'll go into the graph editor and I'll create a steep peak in the middle. And now there's going to be a lot more drastic dark. No, so as you can see now, it gets really dark. It's almost like setting a scene like there's going to be like a battle going down. And I'll even animate the rain as well to make it look even more dramatic. So I'll keyframe the opacity of the rain at the start. Then I'm going to go forward by around um, basically until the vignette stops like getting darker. And then I'll add another opacity keyframe. And then I'll go back to the start and I'll change the first one to 30%. So now it goes from 30% to 70%. And actually I'm going to adjust the graph for the vignette. So, and then it gets a lot darker, like faster. So now it gets darker straight away. And I've just realized that like the actual bar, the actual players are playing in slow-mo, but the actual rain isn't moving in slow-mo. So I'll make the rain slow-mo as well. So I'll right click onto the um, like rain overlay and I'll go to time, then time stretch. And I'll change the stretch factors to 300. I'll see how that looks. That does look really slow actually, so I'll change that actually. So I'll go to time, then time stretch, and I'll just make it 200. And now I've done that, this is the one hour animation done in 37 minutes and 50 seconds. So not even really close to an hour, but I don't think I really need to add anything else because any more I think will overcomplicate it and it will just make it look like way too unrealistic. And I think I've created exactly what I wanted to. So I'm just going to leave it here. So those are the three animations complete. As you can see, there is definitely a big difference between the three. The first one was this like low budget, almost um, like rushed animation where all it really was, was just um, businessmen shaking hands. Then the second one was like, I think the biggest difference was obviously between the first and the second one, because for the second one, I actually only, I pretty much almost spent the same amount of time as I did in the third one. But for the second one, like there was, it, there was a big difference between the second and the first. And then now for this um, third one, I think it, it was really cool. I really like this one because this one was more, had that like almost film like effect what, versus the other ones were almost just like little YouTube video animations. This one was like realistic and was almost like part of a film. And I really like that. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video. It could have just been entertainment or you guys could have maybe actually learned something and you could, if you actually want to follow along with um, what I did, you can find the link to everything I used in the description below. And if you want to learn way more in-depth stuff about video editing, then I would highly recommend that you check out my video editing product, Skillcut, through the top link in the description below.